Okay, so today we'll finish uh, uh, the description of the design process. Uh, in particular, we would focus uh, on the next deadline, that is the so-called deliverable number two, that should be submitted by uh, Sunday, 28th uh, of April, so that we can have the feedback in the lab uh, on the Monday, 29th. Okay. So I hope we will have uh, good uh, vacations and, and uh, for, for the Easter vacation, but then right after that, uh, we need to uh, regain control of our project. So the last time we discussed a bit about the features. Uh, so describing what the system does in terms of a list of features. This is one of the two uh, items that are needed in this deliverable. The second uh, element will be is the architecture of the system. So today we'll discuss a bit more about uh, what we mean by system architecture, and then we'll review together the structure of the checklist uh, of the information required for for uh, for this uh, deliverable. Okay. Um, so first of all, uh, the architecture. What what do you mean by architecture? Uh, the structure of the system. So what are the main uh, elements that compose the system and what are their relationships the connection so if we only had to build one software on one machine there would be no architecture in our system it would be all centralized in one program that does everything but in our case we have different computers maybe we have a central server we have a mobile device we have a raspberry there we have an arduino node we have a smartwatch or whatever so there are different nodes that in in a, some way they are connected to each other and the general computation so all the features of the system are realized are mapped onto one device onto another device onto a combination of two different devices and so on so it's important, first of all, to understand uh, the, the general approach in which you try to map the features of your project onto the real hardware devices and the real software modules. Mm -hmm. And so we'll define, there are several levels. One is the most general, we call it system architecture. So the big picture of how the system is structured and then we can go into more details about the hardware or the software and the, the connectivity in the network architecture so the system architecture uh, try to respond to the question what are the main system components what is their nature what kind of information they exchange with the user the environment uh, and with other components hmm? so imagine a, a picture where there are different nodes different uh, components they call it here these components may be computers may be smartphones may be sensors and uh, we have a list of these components in our system and we try to understand how many of them how many i call them computational nodes maybe nodes that have the possibility of being programmed so a server a pc a, a smartphone a raspberry or uh, so do, do you just need one can you do it one or you do you need more than one and if you if you need more than one uh, why so do, do you really need more than one or just uh, let me say uh, let's move to a more complex architecture only if it's really needed let's try to keep everything as simple as possible okay so trying always to reason about how to solve the, our problem how to implement our features with the minimum architectural complexity so one or more computational nodes there may be or there will be different sensors and uh, of what type are the sensors how they are are they connected are they connected through a wire? They're connected through wi uh, to Bluetooth, for example, uh, through a serial c protocol. Uh, how? Are they integrated into the smartphone already? Uh, where are they supposed to be installed physically in your uh, environment? 
and the user interaction what are the user the devices on which the user is directly interacting a website a smartphone okay and if it's a website where is the website running on where is the server the, the, the web server and so on and most importantly once we, once we start having the picture of the different components that we need to deploy in our environment what is the function of each of them so i need this node because it needs to compute this function i need a central server because uh, the data the database should be stored there okay and so we don't uh, put hardware into a system just for the sake of putting it we put hardware because it's needed for running some software or for providing some functionality so always try to think about why is a given node or a given component useful in the general architecture and uh, then at the lower levels so once we have the big picture and i'll say a few more detailed words in a moment uh, then we can break it down so we have the general picture of the system and then we can break it down into what are okay the hardware components so i may have uh, intelligent nodes i may have uh, less intelligent devices maybe a, a single sensor a single actuator user interface devices and so on so all the the um, the checklist of all the devices that they need huh? what they need to borrow from the lab for example and then there's the software uh, what is the software that is running on these nodes so some software may be already existing i i found a tool for doing uh, you know playlist management okay good i found a tool for doing uh, uh, I don't know, the analysis of the air conditions or the proximity of an object okay there's a software package that you can use a library maybe uh, or there's some software that I need to write because it's missing hmm? uh, and uh, if I'm writing where is it supposed to run and if the software is running on a node and some data is stored on a different node how can the software access information that is in different place so all the communications between these nodes are are important to to model hmm? so for example if, if we take the the very uh, simple example of the wake up system this could be a first attempt uh, at the general archi system architecture so what do we need hmm? so the user interacts with their phone and the phone provides information for example provides the ringing functionality but the phone can also be used uh, for um, configuring the system for setting the preferences for example uh, there are some ambient sensors because in our in this project we decided that the, the system is able to sense whether the user is at home to sense was, whether he's already woken up uh, or is still uh, uh, still sleeping and so on so there should be some sensors i'm is, i'm not detailed here i'm just thinking that this component is needed later i will try to understand what is it and this component uh, is separate it's different from the phone because maybe it needs it needs to mesh it needs to a b constantly inside the house even when the user is moving and b is able to sense some information that the phone doesn't have for example hmm? and so they are separate we, we cannot merge them we need them to be separate the user doesn't uh, interact with this it just the uh, it just something that the user does will be measured by the sensors and where is this information consolidated well maybe both the phone and the ambient sensor will send data to a central server where all the information all the data and all the reasoning takes place so we decided the reasoning takes place on a central server another option could be the reasoning taking place onto the phone there are different solutions different options so in this phase of the project we are trying to explore the different options where do i put this functionality is it better to have it centralized or on the phone well if it's on the phone i can react maybe faster i don't need a central server but then i cannot create a web interface because the phone cannot you know, publish a website you know, from the network point of view uh, so the data should be there in any way music something for uh you know um, emitting some music into the into the environment 
should be something in the environment so some devices are fixed in fixed in place inside the, the room some are outside away let's say in the cloud or whatever outside or doesn't matter where they are and some like the phone are with the user so we are at, we have at least three different loca lo locations for the devices in the environment in the system outside as long as they are connected to the network could be our server could be an external cloud or could be something that travels with the user so a phone uh, a watch or another kind of wearable sensors hmm? so uh, in this system architecture we are just trying to map the, the functionality we already made a list of the features of the system and so we try to understand okay if i need this feature to be implemented i we i would need some sensor here i would need some computational node there and so on hmm? and uh, and later on we can go into more detail okay about each of these blocks boxes or blocks uh, what hardware do i need so for the ambient sensors how many sensors do we need can they be combined in one big sensor with more features or not what well, it's something that we'll see later but for sure we'll have some need for some sensors and maybe some gateway for integrating reading integrating data from the sensor okay. so this local gateway managing the sensors is not in this picture it's something that is needed actually to manage this ambient sensor probably hmm? it's one possibility uh, from the hardware point of view we need a phone we need a server and we need maybe a music server here that could be implemented by maybe with a raspberry with an amplifier so is this raspberry the same as this one or not we decide okay so at this point we are trying to explore the the way in which physically we can build the system and try to find uh, the minimum cost architecture for implementing all the functionalities and then there's all the software requirements so all the uh, software that we need to use maybe we can find it we just need to use it or we need to write for implementing the different functionalities and the software that runs uh, on the different uh, on the user smartphone on the server the software maybe for the website uh, or the software for the data analysis prediction intelligence uh, or the software for managing the sensor data pushing that to, to the server and so on. so maybe a lot of small uh, small uh, um, software components hmm? and finally we have the network requirement which component exchanges data or comments with uh, which other component what is the, what is the map of communications and for every communication what is the protocol the standard is this wi-fi is this bluetooth is this uh, rest tcp ip uh, is this uh, uh, just a wire hmm? uh, with a serial communication or or whatever it depends of course on the type of device um, i i want to spend a bit more some more words about the system architecture which is probably one of the critical parts uh, uh, because what we found uh, in, in the past years in that many cases uh, um, you you tend to jump uh, to the components ah, I need really these sensors and I build my system around the sensor not to just to make it work uh, but mm, we don't probably think about uh, enough about the higher level picture of the system so you will end up with a system which is unbalanced uh, with respect to the, to the features that is uh, that will be implemented by it um, so the idea is uh, that the describing the architect uh, the architecture allows us to describe uh, the choices design choices the engineering choices we are making for deciding how to implement the different features so right now the features of the system are fixed we already defined them our question is uh, how do i map this feature to some real hardware and software system not just the components but also their relationships so 
how do they depend on each other how do they communicate with each other uh, in our case uh, we are trying to develop a mapping of the functionality of the features onto hardware and software components so this is a definition for cmu so mapping the software architecture onto the hardware architecture and the human interaction with these components so trying to give a no, uh, a real life uh, to the definitions to the requirements uh, that we have been working until last week so i try to visualize this mapping in this way so we have uh, our system is made of different features okay we insisted in creating a list of features five to ten no more than them than that which are the key selling points of for our system every feature requires one or more functionalities to be implemented okay so maybe one feature could be managing the user profile and the functionality could be login logout password recovery or whatever and maybe the same functionality login is also used uh, in uh, uh, another feature for example uh, the personalization the customization of the wake up times hmm? so these functionalities are the individual uh, software functions that or hardware functions in some cases that the system is able to implement and these are grouped uh, into features that have have some value for the users okay um, logout is not a feature it, because it, the user isn't happy or it doesn't see any value on the fact that there is a logout button or, or a logout functionality but this is needed to implement correctly maybe the multi-user behavior of the system which is a feature that could be interested for the user okay so always try to think about what the user sees as, as valid as valuable in our system and all the lower level functionalities that you need to implement all the individual web pages all the individual buttons all the individual procedures that you need to implement hmm? all, all these are the functionalities okay so this uh, describes what the system will do as we said we are not into single centralized systems we are into distributed systems so okay this is just the definition on the other hand we have the physical world of a distributed system a distributed system is made of uh, hardware components here the green ones on the right and these hardware components can be programmable or non-programmable so if you're taking a smart sensor, a smart plug, or whatever, they are non-programmable devices. They're hardware devices, but they just do one function, you cannot change that. Uh, so many of them are just uh, hardware that, that you deploy into the field, you can configure, you can connect it. Others are programmable. And the programmable ones uh, are used to run some software onto them. And the software is actually at the end of the day what gives the functionality to the system what gives the intelligence to the system okay so we have non-programmable components programmable components in the other slides they were called computational nodes and the software components that by themselves software doesn't do anything unless it has a cpu to run on and we need to develop a, a mapping between these two worlds so a given functionality is implemented by a given software running on this computer and maybe a device that will be connected to them another functionality is implemented by another hardware component and so on what we must be sure is that uh, on the right hand side no component is uh, useless so everything should ultimately uh, um, finally map to a feature I need this to implement this feature. I need this component to implement this feature. We just don't add components because we like it. We add components because we need them for implementing some features. And since the user you know, sees value in the features, but pays 
for the components a good design is also a design that tries to minimize the complexity of the architecture the, the number of components the number of interactions and so on so try to deliver the features that you promised with the minimum level of complexity here so if you can join two different hardware nodes do that don't make them separate unless you really need for some reason okay so this is the same picture as before but drawn from a different point of view where we see the hardware components the software components that run on this hardware so these red lines here software runs onto hardware are the same as these lines here uh, the non-programmable components must be in some way connected to some programmable one because otherwise I, how can i get the data if this sensor doesn't isn't read by any other computer that reads the data and does something with that and uh, this functionality block here is uh, y is the mapping of these blue lines here so this component is connected to some other hardware component and some software that runs on it uh, for delivering a given functionality hmm? so these are different ways way of drawing this picture is equivalent in, a, in some some way uh, it just shows more the communications and the collaboration between the different components so these um, orange lines are basically data being exchanged by among the different components so last time we started to see how different computers can exchange data with with the rest calls for example rest http calls uh, in some cases it will be just uh, reading some from some bluetooth connection probably but this component needs to exchange data with that component to deliver a, a given functionality so these components exchange data with other components for delivering a given functionality so this is the picture that you should mm, create in your mind and try to document onto onto the website onto the project description and uh, how to come up with a good solution hmm? uh, we always start from the system features okay we create one by one the pieces of the architecture by analyzing the requirements so the features that we want to put into the system so if i have the list of the features, that's why it's important to write them down we ask you to write the list of features on the website so that you can read them and say okay for feature number one what functionality do i need oh i need the historical value of the temperature okay that's one functionality getting the historic the getting and storing the historical value of the temperature so i will need some way of measuring the temperature of sending it to a a server somewhere storing it and querying it so there are low level functionalities that are needed for implementing a given feature for example hmm? and the most important question is what are the alternative ways of implementing for implementing that functionality or those functionalities can i do that just with software i write some more code do i need the uh, some specific device some non-programmable hardware do i need a combination of the two is the data already available uh, on a cloud service hmm? so always try to think or explore alternatives for each functionality don't stop at the first idea that you have or the first uh, you know article that you find on a website on how to do something because we cannot afford having to an architecture which is whose complexity is the number of features or the number of, uh, of functionalities no, i don't have i have in this picture two four seven different functionalities for mapping three features but we only have three hardware components because the same functionality can be achieved and we try to achieve in a different way and we try to uh, minimize the number of components try to share the same components for supporting more than one functionality 
don't try to implement functionality number one with one device functionality number two with a different device functionality number three with another device it will be a nightmare to to integrate them all okay always try to un uh, understand different alternatives and try to find the, the, the best one so for exploring alternatives we start from the user visible features then let's not start from the sensor or from the data let's start from the user what do we need to give to the user? Mm, an image, an action, a sensor, whatever, a, a data, some, some data. Uh, for example, uh, our system needs to recognize an object. Not end, end, not end. An object. And. Uh, there are different ways of doing that okay and Un understanding that this is a w is a water bottle i can do that in many different ways okay uh, and this for example just for give me some example you can do that with uh, with a camera that tries to detect the shape of the object with from with from a picture of it or with a tag so you put a tag uh, onto the device and try to read the tag with a sensor with an fc or bluetooth uh, tagging something like that mm -hmm. or with a physical switch so when the bottle is inserted into its stand it will close the switch so at the moment we assume that the bottle is there mm -hmm. there are many ways of implementing a given functionality when we reason about the architecture try not to decide too soon or decide for one option without considering the others so if you already say uh, oh i want to sense a tag uh, well this is one way of implementing object recognition if you write down we need to to sense a tag and you never uh, consider alternative to this probably the system will grow too much huh? uh, because you cannot share the different solutions so always try to uh, describe what you need in terms of uh, functionalities visible to the user and always time is very short and the effort is always too much so always try to seek for the simplest and safest way simple in terms of uh, less hardware less complication less software less time and safe uh, less risk well i'm not talking about risk for the user like uh, safety risks uh, but uh, uh, risk for you for your project risk that uh, uh, the the project will find uh, um, difficulties will uh, you will run out of time or whatever because you are trying to do something too complex okay so you you should try to be confident uh, that okay the work will be done there will be probably some of course some obstacles some difficulties maybe on one one component you will you already are already planning that there will be a it would be might be the, the most uh, difficult part of the system but the rest uh, try to make it easy uh, try to find ways to implement them easier so instead of creating implementing your own sensor try to exploit existing ones maybe on smartphones maybe on uh, home devices maybe on um, on uh, smart watches or whatever we already have a lot of uh, sensors that are already engineered they already give you the data just by querying it uh, so in not, let's not build it if, if it's not needed hmm? and the same for programmable nodes how many computers do i need oh, i need four different raspberries mm, really yes because this is for this sensor no maybe let, let's start to think about whether uh, you can reduce the number of nodes because each of them needs to be configured programmed deployed connected and so on it will be extra work so it's it would be easier if i have one single node that runs different software on it. i why do i do i need something more than a centralized architecture i could have one server that does everything can i maybe in some cases yes in some other cases maybe not 
because maybe you have a system that runs into different places and so it can have a central server but for communicating with the sensors we need a programmable node inside the environment inside the car inside the, the room or where the system is installed so i need at least one computer there at least for relaying the data to the server so in that case the nature of the system requires to have at least two different nodes but it depends on the project really okay so let's not make it more complex than you think mm -hmm. than you uh, than initially maybe think uh, and try to use the Le the simplest or the less uh, powerful device uh, that you need or maybe you know a raspberry it's uh, an intermediate computer it's less powerful than a pc but it's more versatile because you can put it everywhere it's also more powerful than an arduino board so for that specific function what do i need if a given function is too complex maybe i can just put them more powerful hardware instead of maybe splitting it into more devices hmm? i also try to um, we will always try you will see in the next weeks uh, to simplify your project okay because maybe there are some solutions that mm, that are, will be simpler and will uh, you know, satisfy the same functional requirement and uh, where are these devices deployed always try to think at least two levels the local level and the global level so what are the data that are that can be or should be stored or they better stored be stored into a central location there are those data that needs to be accessible from outside the environment outside the house the car the place or needs to be accessible by other users or need to collect information from different places so they should be outside the given environment so one big server or big or not server somewhere is prob probably needed for most of the project and you also need something local because uh, you we need to communicate with non-programmable non-programmable hardware so if i had a sensor that is already connected ip connected or is programmable okay if let's say a stupid thing for a light sensor i can put an old smartphone in a corner an old one it has a camera so it can detect the light and it can write a small program there that sends the data directly to the server so I don't need anything local more any additional hardware there well okay the phone is an hardware but can also do some other other thing other function hmm. so if a device is programmable it's pro it probably is able to talk directly to the server but if a device is not programmable it doesn't have a direct connectivity to an outside server or whatever and it needs a local hardware to gather the data do maybe some local computation storage sending comments to the actuators and so on so very it's very likely and that's why also <laughs> we are learning to work with raspberries it's very likely that we need also some local hardware and probably doesn't need to be too much powerful but again it depends uh, always try to to think about okay this function recognizing the object is it better integrated deployed in the local server in the local node or in the outside on the server where should i run this software where does it have enough power where does it have uh, the data it needs where does it have the connectivity it needs and so on mm -hmm. and also uh, thinking about uh, the connectivity i know it's difficult for you because uh, you are uh, many of you are still uh, studying or didn't have any computer network course yet and so there's a lot of uh, especially in the networks of the polytechnic where a lot of uh, ports are filtered especially through the wi-fi network and you can publish your server uh you we will need some uh, probably workarounds uh, ah, it works at home but not in the polytechnic yes because the wi-fi is filtered 
and uh, in some cases we need some complex configurations to make it uh, run uh, that is why we have our own wi-fi in the lab uh, that is uh, is not totally unfiltered but is less filtered than the other one the official one so that you can build and communicate more freely without the strong authentication of the wi-fi and so on but in general uh, understanding how different devices uh, exchange data is also one crucial issue okay uh, i saw some uh, usually there are some uh, wrong ideas about st how stuff works uh, uh, for example one question that they hear every year is uh, there are a lot of people that think that bluetooth can be on can only be used for one device i cannot connect with the bluetooth because it, it i already that other device connected but who says that we cannot have more than one connection okay so probably in this part uh, for by with uh, our experience uh, we, uh, we you will probably need some help okay so don't don't hesitate to ask or to discuss or to find uh, uh, the um, the better solutions uh, for example many times we don't consider the fact that we have smartphones that are already connected in some way so maybe we don't need extra connectivity for them hmm? in some cases but again on a case by case always the idea is always the same try to make it simpler simple uh, as much as possible and uh, another question that uh, oh I, of I often ask that uh, during the exams to this one uh, did you think about the scalability well i'm not thinking about scalability to the millions of users but from one to two or from two to three basically from one to two users so we develop one prototype one one of a kind that implements some functionalities and we install it into a car for example okay it will have some local components some global components but if i move to implement the same system in two cars what do i need to replicate and what can be shared among the two cars so if i have some you know history or some global data probably it should be outside so uh, even if we only build one device no? i remember for example one project about the, the party in the house uh, that was dependent on the number of houses in which the system is installed and also in the number of rooms of the house so every room should have their own speaker and uh, controller and so on in that project for example mm -hmm. so always try to think about if i had more than one installation of this device what needs to be replicated because it needs to and what can be shared and of course if there is one device that needs to be duplicated and one device that is common you cannot merge them in your project they need to be separate otherwise your project will never be able to scale to two you have to redo it from scratch in that in that case okay so the architecture is also uh, helps you also to think about uh, uh, these issues here okay so what is the per user functionality per car per location per crossroad something that is multiplied by the number of users or the, by the number of locations and something which is the backbone the infrastructure of the project which remains the same no matter how many users we have or how many locations we are supporting this should be kept separate and especially the communication between the two the apis for communication between the two is the important part if we make this right then it's much easier to complete the project because at that point at the local point of, at the local stage we only need to solve mainly local interactions and all or most of the intelligence will be global probably hmm? and uh, another question non-programmable hardware hmm? which ones well we have a choice in the lab we chose we chose not to standardize on one technology we chose to buy a bit of this and a bit of that so in the lab you will see that there are diff different devices of different brands of different types so that we can choose hmm? uh, as we said we don't want to make a technology driven project in which i have this technology i must use it 
but a feature dri driven project i want to implement these features i will find the technologies that are easier to get to the result and of course each of them is uh, since we have different devices that runs with different technologies each of them is a different story so we'll see that for example the philips lamps uh, use bluetooth as a connective uh, sorry use um, zigbee as a connectivity and are programmable with, with rest uh, many uh, other smart home devices so smart plugs uh, uh, sensors and so on use the z-wave protocol which is a different wi wireless protocol and so we'll need a way of interacting with them for example the, the, the philips lamps already have their own controller with a rest interface smart plugs don't have the, the central controller and so we we must uh, implement our own using a raspberry for example with a with a, with a wife with a z-wave dongle to to handle the communication so every device has different requirements in order to be configured and to be read or written to um, of course uh, we try to keep these external devices to a minimum no? and especially if we have three four different four different sensors in our project well let's try to not to use four different technologies no? try to use different sensors that mostly use the same technology so all the wave or zigbee all bluetooth well probably in some cases it's not possible so you need to use more than one technology in your project more than one technolo technology i mean wi uh, wireless protocol um, but we try to minimize that always hmm? uh, that's why we need to to reason about different alter alternative different choices and if i have a device uh, who controls them should be an easy question so i have a sensor that reads the uh, temperature okay who's reading this this data which software running on which hardware is responsible for that device hmm. so that we can have this you know imagine the arrows that go from the software to the hardware on which the software is running and uh, finally to the device that is reading or writing some some information and again about how many protocols do we need so trying to minimize the number of different types of connectivity okay otherwise we'll get lost into the debugging or the different communication so for example here are some some possible paths in our architecture so imagine you have a distance sensor in the lab we have some um, radar sensors no, the small sensors that you see they, are, they look like two eyes the one is emitting um, waves uh, and the other receiving and measuring the delay and so you can estimate the, the distance from the sensor to an object that is blocking uh, the, the, the reflection that is giving the reflection so this sensor is designed to be mounted onto an arduino it's an arduino component so if you decide that you need that your project needs or wants to use that sensor well you only have one choice about uh, the programmable node an arduino because it has it requires analog input output that the raspberry doesn't have and so okay all this data from the arduino where does it go so the arduino now reads the data from the sensor where is this data going it, do we have a high-end Arduino which is able already to send the data to a server? So it needs an Arduino with the TCP IP stack uh, and the web uh, uh, interface. If yes, okay, we can go directly to the server. Otherwise, we need to transfer locally the data to some computer which has more power to gather this data and to store them. You cannot on the Arduino have a database. You only have in-memory data. So probably it's connected to a Raspberry, I don't know via serial line usb on the usb cable you can open a, a serial port you can write data from the arduino side and read it from the raspberry side and at, at that point on the same raspberry you can have a program maybe a web application probably or something running on a small screen uh, for querying this data uh, there's one possibility uh, the functionality here is uh, seeing the data from the sensor and we need to, to build a pipeline of one or more devices huh? 
uh, I, this is a quite complex pipeline to make it uh, uh, bug-free, let's say. Uh, so if we can try, if we can find a simple solution, mm, maybe it's better with one, com one less component, it would be better. Or for example, if we all want to use, uh, uh, in the lab we have several uh, mul multi-sensors using the Z-Wave protocol, multi-sensor that can read uh, temperature, light, uh, lu um, luminosity, uh, humidity, the presence uh, and the movement, uh, usually five or six different qualities in the same sensor. So they can be very versatile for different kinds of projects. But they use the Z-Wave protocol. And the only way to use a Z-Wave protocol is using a, a, a small uh, board called the Raspberry that is mounted on a Raspberry Pi and with our own APIs. So we need all these components just to expose an API, a REST API in this case, uh, over the Raspberry network, it be wired, the Ethernet cable or the Wi-Fi, to be able to read the sensor. So in some cases we need uh, the choice of a sensor or a device uh, brings additional requirements onto other devices that need to be there uh, because it's the only way you can interact with these devices. And so on. Hmm? Um, so these are these the paths here are, are more like this uh, orange lines that we saw in the picture. So for getting this, this hardware component is able to get some information, which is then read by another hardware component that runs some software, and at the end they deliver a functionality. What is important, we will get lost, we will spend a lot of hours in doing that, in integrating components. But before spending 100 hours in trying to integrate all these components, let's try to spend two hours in thinking about whether we can find a simple solution, a better solution, an easier solution, and so on. Hmm? And try to, to find different, uh, uh, analyze the different devices and the different alternatives. Hmm? We'll have a lecture later later on on trying to find different to solve the problem in different ways no? to find the different ways uh, in which you can solve this problem it will be later because then you first we require to fix down the list of features mm, before starting to think about the components so the for software at this point is the easier part because we already know which functionality it must uh, deliver of course we must know where a given software is running and uh, especially with web application it's a bit more complex because there's a part running on the server and a part running on the browser so always try to be clear wh wh what is running where and where there is stored data because a lot of projects we need to store the data from the sensors and read it for doing some actions and so is the data managed locally so is there maybe a raspberry on the field uh, able to already with the data it, it already has uh, able to do the acting or does need the date does the data need to be sent to the server and then computed there and then the result maybe is, is queried uh, by another application hmm? so if possible we should avoid transferring data we should avoid having two copies of the data one local and one remote because a lot it's just additional work to keep them in sync so we can store on the server only the information that is needed for users that are outside the home or for other users but uh, if we do some if you do more computation locally it will probably easier we, we have less hopes to go to get to the data hmm. and uh, a given software uh, can exchange information with other software modules so if other modules are on the same computing nodes and on the same computer it's easier because maybe they can both read the same database they can just exchange data uh, on the system if they are on different nodes you can you we must uh, define an api a rest api for example so you must deploy on one of the nodes uh, an http server with some rest implementation and the other nodes the clients and the queries and so on so it's, it's easier to have two different, uh, for example, a shared database of two different software that run on the same node and the shared database once inserts the data and the other queries the data. 
there's nothing special to do uh, but if they are on different nodes we, we must uh, wrap this communication into an api mm -hmm. so it's additional work to do it's not complex we saw that implementing an api to read some database data is just a few lines of code but we it's just something that adds up to the complexity of the system so in mapping the software to the hardware nodes we should also consider where is the best location for a software to run that simplifies or that improves the functionality of the system and at the same time maybe simplifies its architecture and so at the end of all these uh, reasonings hmm, that uh, we should have all these discussions uh, and all these al analysis of alternative solutions at the end we define uh, all this uh, overall view of the architecture hardware and software components and the interconnections as we as we already uh, said before okay so this is the the hard part basically of trying to map because at this point we need to have a very good knowledge of the system features and, and required functionalities and a well, good enough knowledge about the hardware that en enables them and the techni techniques and technologies used to manage them so all the part of the course in which we discussed the uh, web technologies http python programming and so on uh, right now is not immediately useful but it's useful because you can start to understand what is feasible what can be done uh, and in the next steps we'll see more say, the, the real devices that we have in the lab and then we, we put together on you know, the work in this uh, week uh, is putting together the system requirements and uh, the knowledge that we have about what can be done with the technology that is available the next step uh, which is not required yet for this uh, deadline is uh, the components selecting the components okay finally once i have an architecture i need to define the specific components that fit uh, into the blocks of the architecture but uh, uh, in as much as possible we'll try to use uh, off the shelf components in the sense so let's find one that is already there i need uh, an interface uh, well use a table a, a tablet for example instead of building my own uh, in some cases we need to create some custom components uh, creating a sensor that well then i will read it or uh, in some project there will be some motorized parts that need to of course to be built from scratch okay uh, but as much as possible since we focus on integration we try to use or reuse existing components uh, and then we, send, we we select which ones i need the sensor for you know air quality okay at a given point we need to decide which sensor part number the precision is it available do we need to buy it uh, so we need to go down to a specific uh, uh, device mm -hmm. uh, try to consider what is already in the lab but also what can be acquired okay if it doesn't cost if it doesn't cost too much we can buy it for the project or in the other case in the other case if you're really fond of doing electronics uh, in some cases uh, you can justify uh, building uh, your own components uh, only if there is not a, a simpler and quicker solution with an existing component of course mm. so basically from the architecture we decide which components of the architecture are off the shelf and oh this applies to hardware but also to software off the shelf software components i already have a library that is able to do this kind of computation i want to i don't know visualize a dashboard uh, of the data okay should should i implement my the dashboard myself or should i find whether there's some dashboard software already available just to download and install of course the second one is better so you can make the system uh, more complete with less effort on your side so let's try always to think about what is uh, already available for me from the hardware point of view from the programmable or non-programmable devices point of view and from the software point of view what really cannot be done uh, well of course at that point uh, we should uh, go into the lab and build it in some way okay so this is uh, all the, um, the information that is required for the next deliverable 
what is living what is what we are leaving out from the deliverable are the next step in which you act you actually do the design the implementation so right now in the deliverable we say we we arrive at defining the features and the architecture of the system and some probably initial component selection then the real funk stars uh, you uh, starting for, uh, from this information you start implementing the system and uh, of course it will require uh, several weeks uh, we know that until june so it's all the part of uh, software development uh, of uh, maybe harder development if you decided to do it yourself uh, or maybe just configuration all this sensing acting reasoning interacting at the end you will have some software some hardware it will not work at the first try you will need to debug it to go back to simplify it uh, it's all the hard work but at that point probably the architecture is already fixed so we don't have to think about it anymore we try to just to, uh, to have the devices work into the existing architecture and implement the, the already decided uh, um, functionalities and uh, the last step which should not be the last one should be the first one or at least should be everywhere is always test and validation so once you develop try always to test what you are doing step by step you cannot write one hour of code without testing whether it runs let alone one week okay if you are building different systems that need to communicate the first the first thing you should implement is the communication between the two and then start adding features to either side mm -hmm. if you build completely system one and you build completely system two and then you hope they just, just work together uh, it will not happen so always try to have a very very minimal system which is already running does nothing but it runs and start adding functionalities one by one to that system so this is uh, something should be more structured is the idea is that of com continuous in integration there should always be a version of the system which is running initially it does nothing or nearly to nothing and every day it does something more but no nobody should break the build break the system if i implement a new feature it should continue to work okay so always remember uh people working in software engineering need, say that testing takes more time than development okay and uh, the uh, don't assume that uh, everything will go right so if you are programming in the morning uh, use the afternoon for testing not for programming more because otherwise days will pass and when, when you start testing you will realize that there's a lot to change okay don't be afraid test uh, the time for testing uh, is never wasted time mm -hmm. it's time that you are gaining from the future okay uh, and what happens is that when i test something i may discover that something was wrong in the implementation or something was wrong in the design or something was wrong in the architecture or maybe some feature was just not feasible and so we need to go back and change stuff okay it's normal do that okay if you realize that a given feature doesn't work because of some previous reason you can go back uh, and change them mm -hmm. and usually this uh, iteration between development testing and reconsideration of the requirements uh, is reiterated many many times mm -hmm. if you do that if you change the requirements uh, remember to update the documentation in our case it's the website okay it's okay to change it okay we are we are reviewing it we are approving it uh, but if you need to change it feel free to do that maybe if you want you can discuss with us whether the change is useful or not mm. but uh, it's also for you at the end uh, in the last week before the exam you need to go to the checklist of the system features say, okay this is done this is done this is done or oh, did you decide to do this or not to, or to change if you don't write it if you don't document it at the end it will be a very crazy period in which you don't understand whether the project is finished or not uh, you not uh, not us uh, before okay uh, no this is nothing new so 
these two last steps uh, of course they don't have any deliverable the real deliverable for the implementation will be of course the demo that you give at the exam date hmm? so the last uh, formal point uh, is for this deliverable d2 that is due on 28 of april as we saw as we saw before and let's just uh, uh, have a look uh, together at what is required here so that is a, we required an introduction that is called the purpose and the scope of the system which is a sort of the vision but more formal okay right now we d we are not uh, talking to the user anymore we are talking to the developers okay so we can be more precise the vision is a very nice narrative of your project but now we need to be more uh, precise which are the users uh, well let's define them uh, what is included in the scope of the project what the system actually does not in general terms but in practical terms okay so but it, it's a very very short uh, uh, part uh, half, a, half, a, half a page or something like that uh, where you say repeat the vision but without all the narrative uh, but going down into the real basic functionality of the system and then you break it down into features a list of 10 to 15 features more or less uh, in the slides uh, that we just shown uh, the, the, the last week actually uh, we have some examples of uh, what is a good uh, feature description okay slide 43 44 4, i don't know if the number is still valid 43 44 yeah this one mm -hmm. what is a feature and what kind of uh, items uh, you should include in your list of features each feature should describe what the feature consists of a short statement something that you can print on a on a on the box of the system or on a data sheet uh, something that is easy to to understand the priority of the feature so that you say that the core functionality of the of the project so what you will present in any case uh, is the minimum level you, sh you should reach uh, are priority one elements uh, priority two is something that you can do if you have more time so we assume that the at the exam you will present a project consisting of all priority one features and maybe some of the priority two ones priority three and above is just for possible future developments uh, that we are not concerned uh, right now and maybe pos uh, possibly uh, try to group the features into functional areas for for example uh, user function user interaction um, intelligence uh, uh, communication devices integration and try to make some titles to make the list uh, more readable hmm? but it's no 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 more different than what the list of features that you can find on any website that is presenting a device uh, or presenting a software and from the so the first half of the deliverable is uh, making the list of features and the second half is uh, presenting the architecture all the discussions that we had today about uh, what are the computa computational nodes only one centralized more than one central and local what is the power uh, that we need uh, mobile devices do we need them or not which are the sensors non programmable devices Wh where are the user interfaces and so on hmm? so I try to make a diagram uh, usually historically this diagram gets right at the third attempt not the first or, or the second one so we need to discuss we tell you we don't understand anything uh, can you can we clarify it what does it mean so it's something that it's uh, it requires usually some uh, uh, iterations because we are trying to to map uh, into something which is very very schematic a lot of thoughts that you have in mind a lot of hypotheses and so on so it's difficult it very is i objectively difficult to filter with are the most important information that we need to fix at this moment hmm? uh, <coughs> consistency is also consistency is also important because uh, it happens that people call the same thing 
in three different ways along the document along the website and so it's very difficult when we read it to understand uh, whether you are really speaking about the same component as before or you just change your name uh, so it's not a problem if you repeat the same word many times uh, it's important that you can you should be clear in what you are presenting um, and then from the system architecture there can be some information about the hardware architecture so it's just basically a list of devices that we need not yet the individual components but maybe the device type mm, maybe for the component we have more time to test or to find the software architecture basically is the list of which software we need to write and by difference which software we already found and we reuse uh, from something that already exists mm. so in this case we have the list of devices that you need to borrow and use and configure and here the list of software that needs to be installed or needs to be written because it's something new and how they interact which is the most difficult part probably will come clearer when you go uh, farther with the development the network arch architecture is something that should already already be in a way uh, shown in the system architecture where you see the different components which communicates with whom but uh, at the network arch architecture level we should also be more explicit about the protocols that we use for communicating um, as we say this architecture part uh, should be already in this deliverable but we it's impossible to finalize it by next week because a lot still has to be discovered by you about your project about the devices about what the software can do or what maybe a library is promising but then you try to use it and you find it doesn't really do what you hoped for and so you need to change so let's imagine that the features should something fixed you write them down you are convinced on them and you try not to change them anymore the architecture is something that is growing you are drafting a first version and then as you go you will change it you will improve it you, you will make it more precise you can you will solve some issues that, that you have at the beginning hmm. so it's normal to adjust the first iteration for this week and then later on you can change uh, the component uh, the select component selection is something that should be part of the final website uh, if you already know some components uh, that you will use you can list them it's a very, very short list just not, not well, maybe not short but very synthetic no, very dry just a list of, uh, of components uh, uh, you read this in bold uh, it's very likely this list to be incomplete or partial at this moment mm. it's not a problem okay it's just to start thinking about the devices that you need and maybe start uh, discussing about alternatives and then of course for the fine for the end of the course for the exam it needs to be uh, completed with all the hardware components uh, of the shell components or something that you built yourself and don't forget to update the open issues part uh, of the, uh, the web website uh, where maybe some open issues from the first deliverable have been solved hopefully and some of them and some new a lot of new ones uh, will probably appear uh, because when you start going to deeper into thinking about okay is this component useful uh, can this computation be done is it feasible and so on uh, probably you can have uh, uh, new ones that we will discuss of course uh, uh, in the um, on the 29 of, of april during the lab and the 29 we'll have all the three hours uh, for doing the exercise but in parallel for discussing the project like we did uh, on the first case hmm? i think it's it's all okay so uh, you have the nearly two weeks because now it's the 15 and this deliverable is due for the, by the 28 keep in mind that uh, in the next weeks or in the next days you will be probably in different places of the world so try to either start discussing or organize yourself in order to avoid uh, you know, um, uh, having problems in the last day where you cannot reach your friends uh, for uh, for finalizing the website okay so that's all for today i'm leaving you some time to go to the display without uh, rushing under the street
if you have any questions i'll be here for a moment of course